As givers and compassionate human beings, it is not uncommon that you might encounter many blocks to self-care and renewal from the intense and fast-paced schedule to other people's needs and demands. We can find ourselves and our needs at the bottom of our daily to-do list. And we can forget or think that we cannot have time for ourselves beyond scrolling social media and watching news or movies. This might not be a problem for a few days or just for a few weeks, but As we ignore our needs habitually, we start accumulating stress. And before we know it, we run the risk of burnout. And in the end, we might even start feeling turned off to the idea of giving to others. And then we start blaming ourselves for that and so on and so forth. So this does not have to be this way. There is a way to renew and regenerate with ease on a daily basis so that we don't overload our nervous system and most importantly, avoid problems in the future and keep on giving. And the key to the real change starts with upgrading the stories and our mindsets, which is what we tell ourselves why we cannot pause and regenerate. And in the next several episodes, I will share about important blocks we create in our mind, especially around time, and also about other blocks which, once brought into our consciousness, we can then update. And by changing the way we think about different blocks, especially about time, we can then become more creative around scheduling time for our own regeneration so that you can keep on giving to others without the risk of running on empty. And if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Ioana Popa from Team to the Soul. And I love and bring this unique blend of science, psychology, spiritual care, and ancient Christian faith. And I invite you to join our weekly renewal nugget, this oasis in the midst of action, which is meant to help you regenerate and renew on the go so you can keep on giving and make this world a better place. So in today's fast-paced world, we are literally bombarded with information, news, worries, curiosities, demands, new opportunities, technologies, and shifting ways in which we work and interact with others. And this leaves very little time for reflection, especially of our own inner workings, our beliefs and conditioned stories we tell to ourselves, which are, by the way, impacting the way we feel and behave into the world. From working with many compassionate people for decades, I noticed that one of the most important blocks to renewal and self-care is the experience of lack of time. This perception of lack of time is expanded, as mentioned before, because of the fast rhythm we live in and the tons of human activity, either in person or online. And this had really increased since the pandemic, especially the online communities, online platforms, and online activities in general. And as givers, you might be either a leader, an educator, healer, entrepreneur, conscious human being, caregiver, and you tend to care a lot about others, which means that you're even more prone to this experience of lack of time. And type in the chat if you resonate with this experience of lack of time. And what are some of your reasons that you experience of the root? This can help us to kind of collectively brainstorm about it. And although it is true that givers lack time more often, it is also true that the perception of time can be altered. Now, you might be raising your eyebrows right now and you might have a point. We don't actually change the actual time, but we can change how we look and how we experience our time. And this actually can give us more choices and it can allow us to be more creative and feel less of a victim of our circumstances and from this time scarcity feeling. And today, here's one of my renewal time tips to help you maybe think or perceive time differently so you can start creating time for your own self-care and regeneration in order to be able to sustain giving to others without the risk of burning out. And in the next several weeks, I'll present more. And next week, I'll present actually this idea of pockets of renewal. So here is the point. It is good to remember 
that although we can feel very busy, there is one equalizer for all of us as long as we're alive. We only have 24 hours in a day. I mean, let's just pause and think about that. No one in a day, as long as we're alive and breathing, more hours in a day than the other. That's kind of equal for all of us. And just look around and ask, although some people feel rushed throughout the day, all the time, some other people may feel they have all the time in the world, independent on how busy they are. And this points to the key. We can change our perception of time, no matter how busy we are. We can change our attitude with which we are greeting our day. Of course, there are extreme situations when this might be difficult, but if you notice that you feel a victim of time all the time, and I've been there, done that, all the time feeling I have no time, I have to do this, I have to do that, and the sense of victimhood inside, like, oh, why is this happening just to me? But it was happening all the time, which pointed to the idea that it was habitual, you know, coming from an inner attitude or story and not really from external circumstances. So. This idea that no matter what happens externally, no one, and I'm saying this again, no one can have control of our inner attitude except for ourselves. This is the ultimate freedom. And I've been really struck for um, amazing writings, especially for people who survived long incarcerations, that notice that no matter what has happened to them, and those are extreme conditions, the inner attitude was the key. And that was the ultimate freedom. And this is our inner power that no one can take away. Our inner Jedi, so to speak. Only we can control our inner attitude and can upgrade our mindsets and keep the mindsets that are really helpful to us and let go of the ones that are not helpful and we might have been conditioned to. So our inner attitude is our own and we can change that. And there are alternatives as how we can see and perceive, in this case, time throughout our day. And by changing the perception, I want to make a point of caution here. I'm not suggesting that we're going to go lying to ourselves and start believing things that aren't true. Like we're seeing a lot of that going around in the world right now. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the perception, the, the reference point. And the difference between the reference point feeling rushed all the time, like a leaf in the wind, a victim at the mercy of our circumstances with no time whatsoever. And notice if you say to yourself often things like, I'm too busy. I'm always running late. I cannot seem to have a break. I can never seem to have time for myself. I cannot take care of myself, not today. If this is the case, as as it was for me, it is probably a conditioned story, most likely subconscious. It's not like we're doing this to ourselves. You know, we just go through our life, but we don't have time to pause and reflect. And this is what we're doing right now. What is the alternative? The mindset that we have just the right amount of time, that we are in the eye of the storm and can access our inner wisdom and skills to meet the day or as for help when needed. So the invitation is to pause and invite yourself to a larger perspective. And here are some useful questions. What if I do have plenty of time for all the important things today? What would that look like? What if there's a way to feel spaciousness in my day? Whom do I need to ask for help today so I can complete all my tasks? Are all the things on my to-do list mine to do, or am I volunteering too much? And whom can I train or delegate to do some of the task at hand? By asking these questions, we invite our conditioned stories to expand, and we look for alternatives, and we invite our inner wisdom and our true self and our soul to bring forth creative solutions around time. So that no matter what is happening around you, you are present at the center and you can remind your brain that you have this choice every moment. And just to get super practical, because I love being practical, it helps to use a planner to write the things that we have to do every day and possibly use a timer 
for each of our tasks so that we don't have all our to-do tasks for the day swirling into our minds. In summary, I invite you to think and empower yourself around your perceptions of time. No matter how busy you are, you can change your attitude about how the day unfolds for you, therefore changing your relationship with time. And although many times we don't choose what is happening in our lives, we can choose how we respond, how we see the world and the way time unfolds so that we can embrace the most helpful in our attitudes. And next week, I will present a simple way to create pockets of timeless time in your schedule so that you can find time to nurture yourself and regenerate on the go, which is what I'm really passionate about. So with that, I leave you and I thank you for this being in this shared time and virtual space. And I wish you a wonderful day and may you continue to regenerate and renew daily in small steps so small that you cannot fail. And until next time, I say goodbye for now.